YouTube. Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Sorry, I, I, I'm new here, so it's, it's, it's hard to make sure. I can't really tell. Uh, anyways, um, so we're going to be doing an unboxing today of a 3D printer. Uh, as you can see in the background, we, of course, do have the CR10, the ANET A8, the Anycubic, Costle, and, of course, the Lowe'sbot Taz6. And one thing that people have always talked about is how great the CR10 is. Uh, and that is why we're going to do an unboxing today of the new uh, ANET E10, which is somewhat of a copycat of the CR10 of what I'm hearing. A lot of people have been kind of saying this and that about the machine, so I really want to find out for myself whether it's worth it, whether it actually works well, uh, and really just get my head wrapped around what this machine really is. So that's what this uh, unboxing and, and video is hopefully going to show. Uh, the CR10, I love the machine. It's a great machine. It prints uh, amazing quality. Uh, but having said that, I, the ANET, you know, a, a, the ANET A8 over here, I, it prints amazing as well. I don't really have any problems with it, with it at, at all. So, um, and the Anycubic, other than its size, it prints fantastic. The, the Lowell's bot, well, come on, it's perfect. So, uh, it, it really does just print everything the way you want it to. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and open this guy up and we're going to take, take a look for ourselves. The first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a knife, okay? Okay, so... Uh, really cut back on my unboxing knives as you can see. Uh, I really wanted to make sure I, I made the best of your guys' time. Time is a very valuable thing and I know your guys' time is, is very, very valuable. So unlike other 3D printing channels out there, you know, such as 3D Printing Nerd or, you know, Maker's Muse and Maker's Noob and all, and, and all those other, you know, 3D print, they, they take up to a half an hour sometimes just to pick a knife before they do an unboxing. And then the unboxing can sometimes take up to 6 to 12 hours, and the video ends up just right around the 10, 15 hour mark, and nobody wants to watch a 15 hour video. So I'm here trying to make this video probably within about 3 hours, so it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be good. Um, the knife that we're going to pick is going to be... Not a knife at all, but the little tiny squirrely piece on the end of the Swiss Army knife. <laughs> Let the unboxing begin. All right, so the things that I care the most about when it comes to a 3D printer is the fact that, you know, it, it needs to be able to print consistently and it needs to be able to print the, the objects that I, I use for business, obviously, um, which is virtual reality accessories. Lastly, as long as I can upgrade the printer, you know, seemingly easily, uh, I have no problem doing so with modifications. Like I said, my ANET A8 is one of my favorite printers and it took me a long while to, you know, get it to where it's at right now, but once I honed it in, I, I mean, really, I never have to do anything to that thing. It just always prints perfect every single time. So, and I, I've shown that off a lot of different times. So, the printer really, in my mind, has a lot to do with the setup. And if you set it up properly and make the proper modifications, then it's going to be great for you. And obviously, some printers are going to be cheaper than others, but it's going to be based off of the, you know, the mechanics that are built into it. So, uh, if you want that really high-end printer, pay the money for it. If you want a cheap printer that you have to keep your eye on, pay the cheap price for it. Um, we're going to find out what this one is. First thing I notice is we've got some PLA right on top. We've got two, uh, we've got 20 meters of PLA right there. That gives 20 meters. Woo! I've heard some people complain about not giving us a whole reel. Uh, I can understand that doesn't make everybody happy, but uh, at the same time, <laughs> I also understand uh, that, that that's not the that, that's not something that every printer gives you regardless. I found that out. So, all right. Uh, when you open it up, the first thing I'm going to tell you that I notice is that uh, it looks a lot kind of like the CR10 in the sense that it's really kind of pre-built for you. I mean, go ahead and take a look at that right there. It, it's just kind of already in the package, ready to go. Uh, it doesn't look like I have to do anything to it to actually get it to uh, work, other than obviously a few different modifications. So. The E10 manual is right here as well. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that. And wow, uh, it gives us some really big pictures to show you what to do. You know, obviously, picture one, picture two, picture three, picture four, picture five. And uh, it seems like we can put this together pretty quickly. So uh, that'd be nice if we can't get it going here right away. It's so cute. It's so cute. It, this, this, this printer is super cute. Okay. I'm kind of excited to have it. I'm really excited to have a little mini miniature CR10. <laughs> is what people are calling it, right? One thing I noticed right away is that the backside has two Z-rods, and of course, uh, things are obviously made out of 3D printed parts. We have 3D printed parts right here, 3D printed parts right here. Um, but if you're telling me right now that having 3D printed parts on a machine makes it cheap, then you need to go ahead and look at the Lulzbot Taz 6 over here. 
Okay, so the Lulzbot Taz 6 is probably, you know, the best printer that I have. And if you look at it, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, a very robust machine. But you'll notice this is a 3D printed part. This is a 3D printed part. This is a 3D printed part. Basically, all the housings here are 3D printed. You know, the, 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 the kind of cool uh, neon parts are 3D printed. Of course, my spool holder is 3D printed. Uh, even these pieces right here are all 3D printed. So, I mean, half of the Lulzbot machine is a 3D printed machine. That doesn't mean it's low quality. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this guy taken out here. All right, let's get this thing built. Okay, so welcome back. It's the next day. Basically, we had to uh, we had to stop. Last night it was like three in the morning, so I couldn't keep unboxing it. Basically, it took about an hour total to put this thing together. It does not take that long at all. There was a few little problems that I had while putting it together, so I do want to point those out because they were, you know, not quite right. Um, first off, we did have the X motor over here where it said extruder. The actual extruder sticker was put on the motor sticker that was supposed to be used. Um, for the X part, and then of course, the, you know, if you just swapped them around, it fixed that problem. I noticed because as soon as I hit auto home, I would watch the extruder go brrrr, and that was meant to be the X motor. So a quick switch around right there, somebody just missed the stickers. Uh, secondly, there was another thing I had to do. Uh, this little button right here, it wasn't clicking, so when I went to go click it, it was just completely still. I had to actually just pull the button off and just give a little bit of space in there so I could click it. Hey, simple as that, right? Um, so that ended up fixing everything right there. Lastly, I do think that there are some, some issues down here, you can't quite see it, but the way the actual uh, hotbed uh, is, is going past the motors, it seems like they're so close that they're almost touching a little bit. So uh, the fix there would be these plastic pieces that are right here, these plastic pieces that you use to level the bed. If you were to just, uh, you know, print some smaller ones, some thinner ones, then it would work a lot better because those ones are just a little bit too fat. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get started printing uh, a vase right here so we can see what it does. And then uh, after that, I'm going to go ahead and get some upgrades going for here. We're gonna add some lights to it, we're gonna add a PEI sheet, maybe some glass, I'm not quite sure. I definitely wanna add a Raspberry Pi to it so I can wirelessly control it from wherever I'm at because right now I don't wanna have to go to the other room for my computer and then come back here to control it. So anyway, uh, right now it's about ready to go. As you can see, if I jump down here, uh, it's actually got the heat bed over here at 50 degrees and then the nozzle is just up at uh, temperature right about now. It seems to get to temperature pretty quickly and uh, so there it goes. It's starting to get going right, right now and actually, go ahead and just watch it for a second. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Is it, is it gonna, yeah, oh, looks like it's Looks like it's working just fine. Looks like it's working just fine. All right. Good to see. Good to see. So we're gonna go ahead and let that guy go for a little bit, and uh, I'll go ahead and get some more footage on it before we end this one. But uh, as far as I can tell right now, it looks like it's gonna print well, and uh, pretty excited about it. Didn't take very long to put together, and it's a uh, it's it's fairly cheap for the price. Granted, of course, if you do want to spend the extra hundred dollars for that CR10 over there. I definitely would recommend doing that because you do get the glass plate with it, you do get the size with it. Um, this one, I, I really think it's going to print just fine for me. Of course, the, we'll, we'll give you more information as time goes on, but the big thing with this one as opposed to the one over there is just the size. I mean, really, this one's like the little tiny brother of that one over there. This one's, as you can see, I mean, <laughs> it's just... The size is pretty obvious when you compare the two of them right there. So anyways, I'll go ahead and uh, end this video right now. I'll see you guys in the next one later. One more thing. So I got this little, uh, I got this little fire alarm. It's, it's tiny, but you can check it out. It's like, it's, it lasts for 10 years. There's no battery or anything like that. And you just push this one button on the back to test it.
Yeah, that's loud. Anyway, uh, what's great about this is you can just put it over here by your 3D printers, kind of on the wall. It checks for carbon monoxide as well as smoke and all that wonderful stuff. So uh, putting these little guys by your printers is a very good idea. Uh, I will see you guys, like I said, in the next video uh, once we get some more of this stuff printed. I'll give you guys some updates. say, hey, why do you have all these printers? And it's because you've got to print a lot of things in different colors at the same time. So that's why. We've got a troller holder printing in black right there. We've got some red. Oh, let's turn some lights on. We've got uh, some red PETG stuff being printed over there. We've got a cup being printed right here. And then we've got octopus being printed there. And then we have a oh, headset stuff being printed there. Crazy!